Our next presentation is neutrophil galactinase associated lipocalcin, NGAL lipocalcin 2, regulates the onset of serum autoantibodies in pristine induced lupus, which will be presented by Dr. Putterman on behalf of his colleagues from Albert Einstein College of Medicine and the University of Florida in the United States. remind us to check our slides each time. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to thank the Congress organizers for inviting me to share uh, these results with you today. And uh, the topic of my talk is neutrophil gelatinase associated lipocalin or NGAL, otherwise known as lipocalin 2, it regulates the onset of serum autoantibodies in pristine induced lupus. So just a few words of introduction on NGAL. NGAL is a member of the lipocalin superfamily, the lipocalins are very important in iron transport, and this is quite ubiquitously expressed. Uh, originally, it was found in gelatinase and neutrophils, but uh, really found widely in hepatocytes, alveolar epithelial cells, and resident kidney cells, including mesangial cells and especially protocytes. Uh, it is found that NGAL is a very, very sensitive uh, responder to a variety of, of insults, uh, ischemic inflammatory conditions, including metabolic diseases, organ transplantation, and neoplastic diseases as well. The relevance to lupus and to nephritis is that uh, in parallel, in the last couple of years, there's really been a, a tremendous expansion in the use of NGAL as a biomarker of both acute and chronic diseases, um, acute and chronic kidney diseases, and, and I will show you this is also relevant to our lupus patients themselves. Uh, from the point of view of uh, pathogenesis and, and importance in inflammatory pathways, NGAL is known to be involved in innate immune responses, and in NGAL deficient mice, these mice display a broad variety of apoptotic defects, which might be relevant to understanding the findings that I'll share with you in a few minutes. Uh, in investigating the mechanisms of pathogenesis of anti-DNA antibodies, we found that one of those stimuli that can upregulate NGAL is pathogenic anti-DNA antibodies, while non-pathogenic anti-DNA antibodies did not upregulate NGAL in renomesangial cells. And furthermore, that this is not just a marker of disease, but is also directly involved in pathogenesis. We found that it's a marker of human lupus nephritis, and this is actually work done by a Argentinian physician who was a postdoc in my lab, Melanie Patashny, who, sh who showed some years ago that uh, lupus patients with nephritis have a higher titer of urinary NGAL than patients without nephritis and compared to normal controls. And NGAL concentrations, urinary NGAL concentrations, showed a linear and significant correlations with the renal sleet eye score as an indicator of uh, severity of nephritis. Moving to mice, we wanted to find out if this is, we wanted to measure whether NGAL is also elevated in the serum of lupus mice. We looked at BLAC6, which is a negative control. NZBW, shown in green, is much significantly higher than B6. Then the next couple to compare is MRL+, plus, which is has an autoimmune tendency, but is basically the control background. And as you see, MRLLPR lupus bone mice has greatly increased titers of NGAL, both in serum and in the urine as well. Uh, moving to an induced model, we looked at nephrotoxic seronephritis. Nephrotoxic seronephritis is a commonly used model for antibody-induced nephritis. It's induced by passive transfer of uh, preformed anti-glomerular antibodies into non-autoimmune mice, and these mice within seven to 10 days go on to develop a rapidly progressive crescentic uh, and necrotizing glomerular nephritis, very similar to what is seen in lupus. Um, there are three groups. You see here NPS challenge mice that received the nephrotoxic serum uh, that received almost 
normal rabbit serum and PBS, you see that the nephrotoxic serum challenge mice have significantly increased serum NGAL and even more dramatically of urine NGAL. So clearly it's a biomarker for uh, the activity of nephritis. But is it just there? Is it just an a, um, innocent bystander or is it directly contributing to the pathogenesis? We then induce our nephrotoxic serum nephritis in NGAL sufficient in in NGAL sufficient mice or NGAL knockout mice. And as you see on the left, NGAL knockout mice were uh, very significantly uh, protected from nephritis. And as you see on the right, when we actually looked at renal histology, not only were there significant differences in proteinuria, but NGAL knockout mice had significantly uh, improved or attenuated renal histopathology. Their nephritis score was, was less, that less uh, hypercellularity, immune deposits, etc. So at least from uh, an effector stage, once you transfer pathogenic antibodies into mice, uh, NGAL deficiency is protective, suggesting that in nephritis, blocking NGAL might be beneficial. And then we wanted to continue to uh, assess the effect of NGAL or the role of NGAL in generating autoantibodies, not only in the response in the kidney, but does it, will it also affect uh, antibody generation? And we use the pristane-induced model of lupus, uh, which is a widely used model of lupus, and its advantage, one of the major advantages, is that it's inducible in black six mice, which is the background in which we had the NGAL knockout. So we injected pristane into B6 mice, or the NGAL deficient mice, and followed the course of disease. We looked four months after pristane injection. Uh, control groups of each genotype, so uh, B6 or the B6 knockout, were injected uh, intraperitoneally with uh, PBS. And our hypothesis was that similar to what we found for nephritis, we would also see an effect on antibody generation as well. And as hypothesis, hypotheses go, um, we were surprised. We were surprised. Uh, just briefly about pristine-induced uh, lupus. Uh, it's a reproducible and robust model popularized by uh, Wes Reeve, in which these mice develop antibodies to DNA, single-strand DNA, chromatin, SM, RNP, and ribosomal P, which peaks at about six months following a single injection of uh, pristine intraperitoneally. These mice have a very strong local inflammatory response uh, with lipoglomas in the peritoneum. And they also, in, depending on the strain, these mice all de also develop an immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis, which is autoantibody dependent. Um, so here to start to see results from our current study, we see four groups of mice. These are our control groups, B6 and then uh, NGAL knockout mice that received only PBS. They don't develop autoantibodies. And really, the two important groups to compare are the B6 mice, which uh, were injected with pristane, and the NGAL knockout pristane injected mice. And to our surprise, the pristane injected and the NGAL knockout mice had significantly higher anti single stranded DNA titers, anti double stranded DNA titers, and anti histone IgG titers. Again, the comparison is between the two columns on the right. Uh, the B6 pristane mice develop uh, significant titers of antibodies relative to, to their control. Our comparison is the NGAL knockout versus the wild type uh, pristane injected mice. One of the characteristics of the pristane induced lupus model is generation of SMRNP antibodies. You see here the B6 mice injected with pristane, the uh, positive control, SM positive uh, serum and RNP positive serum. You see that there is some generation of anti SMP. RNP order antibodies in these mice, but clearly this is greatly accelerated and exacerbated in the NGAL knockout mice. Looking at ANA, uh, NGAL knockout mice do not have a baseline autoimmunity. Pristane mice start to show some speckle pattern, and this is exacerbated in our NGAL knockout mice. This is, of course, just a single slide representative. And when we quantitate, both increase in homogeneous staining and speckled staining is present in our NGAL knockout mice. Looking by ELISA spot, so ELISA spot was done to address the question whether 
we have just the same number of B cells secreting more autoantibodies, or is there an actual increase in the number of B cells which are specific for autoantigens? We see a, a tendency to increase in uh, IgG anti-DNA specific B cells. Um, it's closer to significant for the smRNP and significant for the antihistone IgG. So there is a tendency towards increased B cells which are specific for autoantigens. Looking at the spleen and trying to begin to understand the mechanism by which autoimmunity is accelerated in N-gal knockout mice, we found an increase in several very key chemokines uh, and their receptors. CXCL13 is important in organization of B-cell lymphoid tissue, and if this is where autoantibodies are coming from, this is increased in N-gal knockout mice. Similarly, increase in IP10 and in MCP1 or, or uh, CCL2. Uh, we found specifically acceleration of particular isotypes. AID is the enzyme which catalyzes isotype uh, switching. That is increased in AID knockout mice and also interferon responsive genes. Similarly, we found an increase in T cells, uh, T cell specific transcription factors both in regulatory T cells uh, as well as TH7 T cells ROC. Uh, we have not yet pursued this very interesting observation and we need to see what is the role of specific T cell populations in autoantibody generation. So to summarize and to our surprise, following Christine's challenge, we found that NGAL deficient mice shows significant increases in the level of autoantibodies to DNA single-stranded DNA, smRNP, histone, and chromatin as compared to wild-type mice. Uh, NGAL deficient mice also showed not only an increase in titer, but also increased numbers of autoantibody-producing cells. Uh, expression of inflammatory ma mediators induced by pristine, including CXCL13, IP10, and their receptors, as well as AID, might, was significantly upregulated in the spleen of NGAL knockout mice, and we speculate is important in the pathogenesis of autoantibodies in these mice. Uh, of course, any effects of kidney disease are important, but were not analyzed at the time of this presentation. Uh, we very much are interested in the mechanisms for the early onset of autoantibodies in NGAN mice. Specifically, hypristane might modulate the proliferation and functional responses of spleen cells in spleen cells without NGAL. And we, it is important to determine the role of NGAL blockade. Following our results in nephrotoxic serum nephritis, we were very excited, thinking we have an antibody that can block uh, renal disease. And we were starting to think about applying that for mouse models and hopefully human disease. And now we have this sort of discrepancy in which NGAL seems to be protective for, uh, seems, to be, seems to exacerbate nephritis but seems to be protective in generation of autoantibodies. And finally, you. I'd like to acknowledge um, uh, the people that did the work, our collaborators in the University of Florida in Gainesville, and the funding bodies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your very interesting work.